Welcome to Mikon's hardware. In this video I am going to demonstrate you the easiest way how to tighten your memory timings on Chinese X99 motherboards. This method works on any other motherboard and with any other memory stick with any other CPU as long as you have options to customize your memory timings in the BIOS settings. But for this video I am going to use Klisre X99 D8 motherboard with Huanan Zhi X99 F8 BIOS, Xeon E5 1650V3 for the CPU and two sticks of crucial DDR4-2400 ECC registered RAM for the memory sticks. I am not a hardcore overclocker and I will be focusing on the main timings in this video. If you would like to learn about hardcore memory overclocking, I suggest you to watch Buildzoid videos from the actually hardcore overclocking YouTube channel. The link will be provided in the video description. Let's prepare for tightening the timings of your memory. First of all you need to download a few very useful software utilities in order to read your memory information and test the stability of your system. I strongly recommend you use Ada64, Typhoon Burner, Memtest86, Prime95 and Corona Benchmark. You will also need a USB flash drive for the Memtest86. To prepare the drive, download Memtest86 archive, unpack it and start imageusb.exe executable. Once the application starts, select your flash drive and write the image to the USB drive. This will prepare you a bootable USB drive, which can be used to execute Memtest86 and validate your memory stability. Links to all the required software utilities as well as Memtest86 will be provided in the video description. After all the software utilities are downloaded and Memtest86 bootable flash drive has been prepared, move to the next step. During this step you have to validate what kind of memory sticks you have installed in your computer. Boot into Windows and start a 64 application. Inside there navigate to motherboard SPD option and take a look of what kind of memory sticks you have installed. There you will see list of officially supported memory timings for your memory modules. Take a screenshot of this application and send it to your phone, to your laptop or anywhere else you will be needing this information when updating your BIOS settings. ADA64 does not provide all possible information about your memory modules, thus you can use Typhoon Burner to get some extra info. For this start Typhoon Burner, go to EEP RAM option and select read SPD menu items to read information about your memory modules. There you will see all possible information about your memory modules as well as list of supported timings configurations. Take a screenshot of these readings as well, send to your phone or laptop or wherever, so you will have access to these values when setting up BIOS settings. Once you have all the required information about your memory modules, you can start to tighten the timings of your memory. First of all you need to set maximum available memory speed for your processor. Usually for Xeon E5-1650 this is DDR4-2400, for a Xeon E5-2640 this is DDR4-1866 and for a Xeon E5-2650 this is DDR2133. In general you shall aim to have the fastest memory speed possible, but sometimes it's better to downclock your memory and tighten the timings, because some memory modules are working better with lower frequency and tighten timings, and when you increase the frequency you have to increase the timings extremely much and the performance degrades overall. If you are using this guide for the AM4 platform or any other platform which does not have memory limits applicable to the Chinese X99 motherboards, then leave everything on default and try to increase your memory speed as much as possible and figure out what is the maximum memory speed which is working with your CPU and with your memory modules. After that you can go to tighten the memory timings. Open the memory information you have taken from ADA64 or Typhoon Burner and locate the default timings configuration for the memory speed you have selected. In this case it's DDR4-2400. Input these values into the CAS latency, TRP, TRCD, TRAS, TR TRFC and TRC. You can also play with all other timings, but I will focus only on the main timings in this video. Make sure that the command rate is select to 1N or 1T. In different motherboard biases it can be with a prefix or without a prefix, but generally you need to aim for the common timing or CT to be 1 something or just 1, not 2 and not 3. Save the changes and reboot your computer and go back into the BIOS. If you were able to successfully boot, then everything is good. 
go back to the ADA64 memory timings information and locate the next entry, and input the values from there. Save the changes, reboot your computer and go back to the BIOS. If the computer works, this means you have tightened your timings to the next step, and you can proceed with these steps until your computer stops booting. Make sure to always remember what is your latest successful boot configuration. For example, you can take picture of the screen with your phone as soon as you have successfully boot into the BIOS and you see your memory timings on your screen. Once you reach the point when the computer does not start, make sure to clean CMOS and restart back to your computer, input the latest successful boot configuration, save it, and then boot from the USB flash drive which was prepared at the step 1. Memtest 86 will validate your memory stability, and you have to wait for at least one successful pass. Ideally, you have to let it pass at least four times to be 100% sure that your memory is perfectly stable and working with no errors. But as soon as one successful pass has been done, you can be somehow sure that your memory configuration is stable and ok for everyday usage. If you start to see any kind of errors during the memtest 86, this means that the memory configuration is not stable. Reboot to the BIOS again and lose your memory timings one step back. After that, boot from the USB flash drive again and let memtest 86 pass. If it does not pass, go back with the memory timings one step again. Run memtest 86 again and make sure that it has at least one successful pass. Ideally it has to be four, as I have said before. After memtest 86 successfully passes, reboot the computer and go back into Windows. In Windows use ADA64 memory test to validate that your memory is stable and is working in dual channel, quad channel or whichever channel configuration you have. Start CPU Z and take a look at your memory configuration to make sure that all the timings are in the place and the memory configuration is also correct. It may happen that if you have two memory sticks or 3-4 memory sticks, some of the memory sticks will not be able to keep up with the memory timings that you are trying to request. For me, it happened that memtest86 has passed successfully, but in Windows only one memory stick was working, and even though CPU Z was demonstrating that I have dual channel configuration, I have two memory sticks installed, Windows was using just one memory stick, ADA64 memory speed test was demonstrating speeds which correlate to just one memory channel. I had to step back with my memory timings in order to restore the normal behavior with dual channel 16GB memory configuration. Corona benchmark significantly stresses the CPU memory controller as well as the memory sticks, that's why you can also use it to validate your memory stability. If the benchmark crashes or does not complete, this means your system is not stable. Once you have found the best timings configuration which is working stable for your system, you can try to tighten memory timings even further by adjusting individual values. For example, if your system works stable with DDR4-2400, with the timings from DDR4-2133, and timings for DDR4-1866 does not work or is not stable. You can try to apply values from DDR4-1866 one by one to the DDR4-2133 template and see which of the timings values is causing instability or system boot failure. In some cases I was able to use some timings from DDR4-2133 and some values from DDR4-1600. There is no general guide which of the timings are usually the problematic for the memory modules because different memory chips are having different behaviors, and with one memory chip you will be able to tighten one timings, with other memory chips you will be able to tighten other timings. Again, if you are interested to learn about different kind of memory chips and what kind of behavior you can expect with them, I suggest you go to the Buildzoid actually hardcore overclocking YouTube channel. He is covering this subject very good. Unfortunately, Chinese X99 motherboards do not support memory voltage regulations for DDR4 modules, that's why I did not mention anything regarding the voltage. In general, you can treat memory voltage as any other timings value, first set it to 1.35 volts or 1.4 volts and then try to figure out what is the best configuration you can have. First tighten the timings and then start to slowly decrease the memory voltage until you find the minimum required memory voltage for the stable system operation.
Using this technique, I'm currently testing Clisrate DDR4 2400 8GB memory modules to validate what kind of performance you can achieve with these cheap Chinese modules with the DDR4-1866, DDR4-2133 and DDR4-2400, as well as what kind of memory performance you can expect with AMD Ryzen CPUs and Clisrad DDR4 memory modules. I hope this little tutorial will be useful for you, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.